All right, we will go ahead and get started for this evening. Again, thank you all for joining us for this session about reimagining leadership. My name is India Benson, and I am the program manager here at GlobeMed headquarters. We are so excited to hear your thoughts this evening. So I encourage you to participate in the way that's most comfortable for you. If that's sharing thoughts out loud, that's great. And if that's putting reflections in the chat, that's also great. This time is about coming together as a community and learning from one another as we work towards our goal of health equity. So we're gonna start off our session um, with some introductions and a breakout room. So you'll have 10 minutes with your breakout room partner to introduce yourself with your name, pronouns, role in Globe Med, and one fun fact about yourself. Afterwards, answer the following question. Do you consider yourself to be a leader? Why or why not? And Sarah, can you go to slide two? So again, here are the questions for our first breakout room, which will be 10 minutes. Um, and so we're gonna pair you up. So you'll have a one-on-one -on -one partner. Right. Okay, Sarah, you can stop sharing the screen at this time. And if you can go ahead and drop um, the Google Doc link in the chat so everyone can have access to that. That'd be great, thank you. Um, and now we're going to head out into the breakout rooms, like I said, for 10 minutes to discuss, and then we'll be back together. All right, I believe everyone made it back into the room. I am curious, did a screen pop up in your breakout room and you saw a slide? I'm seeing some nods, okay, cool. Great, nice. So Sarah, just a little side note, discovered a new feature of Zoom where you can share screen into breakout rooms and it's not just in the main session. So as you think about like, what you're gonna be doing in your chapter if you're using Zoom this year and stuff like that, that's a cool feature to keep in mind because um, we just discovered it. So just wanted to put that out there. Um, yeah, so you can, so you can see. Cool. All right, so uh, I hope everyone enjoyed getting to know those uh, who are in your, who were in your breakout room. Um, so now that you've discussed with them, um, whether or not you consider yourself to be a leader, I would like to um, walk you through a short reflection activity. So this reflection activity and question style um, is part of our learning pedagogy, which has four important points. And while it's pictured um, on the slide um, as being a, cycl a cyclical process, um, it can definitely be much more dynamic in, pra in practice. So starting off, what we do is encourage others to think about what they know or explore, which involves seeking information, knowledge, and learning inputs. We encourage others to consider what they think and why or discern, which involves making meaning of and connections between ideas. We encourage others to think about what they would do next or act, which involves taking individual and collective action toward a goal and vision. And finally, we encourage others to think about how it went or reflect, which involves assessing intent, impact, and next steps. Okay, Sarah, can you change the slide, please? Thank you. So self-reflecting is a critical part of social justice work because our social positionality, our identities, our roles, our experiences is explicitly tied to how we interact with the world and how the world interacts with us. And because of systems of power, privilege and oppression, each of us hold both unique and shared experiences. Thus, it is important to spend time processing through your individual experiences so that you can maintain appropriate and healthy space for others in this collective work. So right now, I would like everyone to take five minutes to individually reflect on the following questions. Explore, what assumptions do I carry about what being a leader means? 
discern what examples of leadership are informing these assumptions. Act, how will I actively work to expand my view of leadership in the coming year? And an example of this could be, what resources will I seek out? So Sarah will start the music back up during this time um, and feel free to keep your volume up as you reflect or turn it down. Um, you can also turn off your camera if you would like as well. Um, but we will take five minutes uh, for this reflection activity before coming back together as a group. All righty, we're going to head on back. So I know that was only five minutes and that probably did not feel like enough time, um, but hopefully you were able to jot down some thoughts. Um, so yeah, now we're going to open it up and discuss um, for uh, about 10 minutes um, to hear what was coming up for individuals as they were thinking about um, if they consider themselves a leader in the breakout rooms and then um, working to um, do some introspection to think about the assumptions of what we mean by leaders. Um, so who would like to kick us off? I can start. Um, so I feel like my assumptions for leaders, I've always had leaders in my life that have really been bubbly and just extroverted and always was there for the people that they were leading. So I feel like that's kind of where I got a lot of my examples of leadership from. Um, and that's what I'm kind of trying to work upon. However, I do kind of realize that I have to keep an open mind and know that I can't be that person all the time but try to be that for the people I'm leading. Um, and then just like always going to different leadership sessions, either like on my campus or that like HQ is holding in order to keep my mind updated and always try to be the best leader possible. Thank you, Jacob, for getting us started. Uh, and I thought that was a really good example. Again, like the image that we have that comes up of how a leader should act. Um, as one that's bubbly and can speak well, right? And is going on and very charismatic. Um, for those who have ever done the 16 personality test, um, it's normally the ENFJs, right? That they say are the leaders. Um, I'm curious if uh, anyone has any reflections um, based off of what Jacob said or their own. I think one thing maybe to consider about being a leader is that it's always in relationship with other people. Like you can't be a leader in a vacuum. And so um, I guess like one thing to keep in mind, um, like in a leadership position is like what the people that like, you know, you're in relationship here, um, you know, like as, as their leader, like what they expect of you as their leader, you know, like, why do they trust you? What values do they want you to put forward? Um, and like, what makes them think that you're like trustworthy as a leader? And so I think being a leader um, means being like a accountable to that and being open and responsive um, to like the wants um, and wishes and um, I guess expectations of the people um, that you are in that relationship with. Yes, those same values and uplifting those. Uh, does anyone want to expand on that? Also feel free to use the chat as well and I'll uplift it there. Um, I think we talked about it in our breakout rooms earlier, but I think that for the first question about the assumptions about what um, being the leader means, um, it's... Oh, Nikki, I think you accidentally muted yourself mid-speech. Sorry, I think I cut out. 
Um, but yeah, we were talking about it earlier. I think that there's like different roles that a leader can carry. It's not necessarily all being all about being charismatic in the way that you carry yourself. It's more so about um, how you're making your team feel and how you're delegating your roles and um, like the, how your team is doing as a whole and less so about the power that you carry um, individually. Definitely, our our standard ideas of what leader uh, what leaders are supposed to do, right, is to be able to hold everything and navigate through all the different pieces. Um, although being a leader is just a, is just as much about being strength based and seeing the the gifts that those around you bring and being able to know when um, when you're able to to step up and share those those special gifts that you have to share for a space or for a project um, or your work in a movement. Um, and also when you're like, hey, someone else has this really amazing talent that they're able to bring and I'm gonna step back and I'm going to let them take the lead in, um, you know, in this project, in this conversation, um, whatever it may be. I see Caitlin in the chat said, one assumption I have made um, is that leaders are always in charge of doing it all. Mm -hmm. When in fact, they have so many others in their corner who they can work together with to get the work done. Yes, Caitlin, so important. Again, that, that really important note about delegation and recognizing that we are not alone. Um, Caitlin is trying to take us all the way to our wrap up. We're not there yet, um, but so important that we're not alone in this work. Does anyone else have any thoughts and reflections about um, assumptions that they have about leaders or how they want to expand um, their view on leadership in the next year? There was once that I took this class a couple of years ago on um, servant leadership. So kind of like how to lead by serving the people that you are leading. Um, and a lot of it was really actively listening to the people that you are around. I feel like that's definitely what Globe Med strives to do is actively listening to our partners or even just people in our organizations. Um, so I think for me, a big one that I'll be actually working for expanding my view of leadership is just like continually listening to members of my chapter and seeing what their opinions are and how we can all grow as an organization together. Yes, definitely. I do not know if all of y'all are seeing um sarah who uh is our tech support for tonight and all of her emojis but she is uplifting them um for you <laughs> for you because uh, these are such amazing thoughts um, and reflections that y'all are sharing um because like you said jacob um being able to uh bring those questions bring those um those ideas those different projects to um to the others that um you're working collectively with is so important. Um, and again, I am assuming that many of you here are probably in e-board positions, whether a CP or a GHC coordinator or a community builder. Um, and I just wanna encourage you that you're not alone in the work that you do. You have your fellow e-board members and you have your chapter members. Um, they're there um, to all, like y'all are all working uh, towards that same goal. Um, so tap in tap into those gifts to those ideas, those reflections that um, others in your chapters um, have and can definitely bring to the work that you do. Yeah. Would anyone else like to share a final thought before we move on? All right. Well, again, thank you all who are sharing. Um, and for those who are actively listening and taking it all in, um, I think that's also 
um, another assumption that comes with being a leader, right? That leaders always have to speak up and, and share uh, vocally. Um, but it's just as important as was mentioned by students to be able to be active listeners and to be able to take it all in and reflect and be able to, um, to act on that. So thank you all who shared and who actively listened. All right. So throughout the year, I just want to encourage everyone to come back to your notes um, and reflect on how you've been able to expand your definition of leadership, how you've been able to act in uh, Globe Med values um, and really think about that, that reflection part um, of our learning pedagogy will. So now I would like to take some time to discuss um, what it means to, to lead oneself, to lead self. And so um, just as we did in this previous activity, um, leading self uh, means self-reflection and responsibility um, that we each have to assess our own perspectives on global health equity and the desire to act. It's asking questions, it's asking yourself uh, the questions of where do you see inequities and injustices in the world and how do you take part in creating a change? It also looks like seeking out the right experts. Um, now the word expert definitely comes with a connotation that is tied to um, particular titles most of the time, like someone's holding you know, a doctorate degree. Um, but it's important to ask yourself, why do you consider X person an expert? Um, again, just like we collectively reflected on our, on our assumptions about what being a leader means, it's important to reflect on um, when you are passionate about something and are going to seek out the work, who are you going to talk to? Who are you seeing as experts? Um, so asking yourself those um, interrogating questions of, um, you know, why am I considering this person a leader? And seeing where those uh, assumptions are coming from. Um, you know, whether that's coming from you know, elitism, classism, capitalism, uh, white supremacy culture, or if it's coming from a place of experiential value. So the experts are the members on the ground, the individuals who are immersed in the community or living through the experiences that you want to support. And I feel like our partnership model um, is a great example for us to, to think about. Um, because we see our grassroots partners as the experts because they live in their communities, they work in their communities, they know um, the interventions they want to take in their communities and they're inviting us in um, to work alongside them. So again, I think the partnership model is just a great example of that as we rethink our ideas of experts. And finally, leading self can look like making individual commitments and taking actionable steps to do better. Um, for example, you may choose not to support a certain company um, because of the negative and oppressive environmental impact um, that it has in its surrounding communities, which are primarily communities of color. So Sarah, can you go ahead and change the slide? Thank you. So now with all of those reflections in mind from others, and um, again, what I just shared about leading self, I want to take time uh, to go into a final breakout room for this evening. And we'll be in there for 15 minutes to discuss the following questions. What strengths do you bring to your role that you can share with others? And what areas would you like to grow as a leader? What motivates you in the work that you do? And what support do you need from others in order to stay motivated? So Sarah, can you drop the shared Google Doc link back in the chat? And in there, you're gonna find the questions for y'all to discuss, but who knows, Sarah might want to do another screen share for the breakout rooms, um, but we have the uh, the Google Doc there in case you want to see it on a different screen. Um, so right now we'll stop sharing um, this uh, the slideshow and then we'll be in our breakout rooms for 
15 minutes uh, to discuss the following questions. All right, I feel like everyone has made it back from the breakout rooms. So I hope that you enjoyed your discussion time. Um, I was able to learn more about yourself and others who were in your breakout room. So it's important to remember that we are not alone in our strive for health equity. We have each other to lean on for support and care. So don't forget that in the work that you are doing. Those around you can be great thought partners, but we are all human and we need to uplift and encourage one another when things get hard. When you're tired and it's difficult to see the light at the end of the tunnel, lean on each other. Last week, we had an amazing speaker, Tristan Taylor from Detroit Will Breathe. And he said that the work that we do is a collective process. Freedom requires that we do it collectively, not individually. We need each other. That's the only way we're going to get through this. I encourage you to watch that video if you weren't able to join us for that session. Um, Sarah is dropping the link in the chat now. Um, it's a great conversation uh, to have with your peers as you continue to think about your place uh, within this movement. And I feel like also a good segue um, into tomorrow's session too about leading others, you know, regarding leading others. So now as we close for the evening, um, I would like to encourage you to complete um, GloateMet's leadership development packet that will be coming soon um, and accessible on our resource vault on our website. Um, it is a great tool for you to continue reflecting um, on your leadership and to set an actionable plan for how you hope to grow in your role in the next year. I want to remind everyone um, that we do have two more programs this week that's dedicated to our discussion surrounding reimagining leadership. Um, the next one, as I mentioned before, is leading others. That will be tomorrow, um, Wednesday at 5 p.m. Central Time. Um, and the final one will be on Thursday, also at 5 p.m. Central Time. Um, for the one on Thursday, we will be examining some case studies and doing some collective brainstorming um, on some learning. So it's going to be exciting. I hope everyone comes out to that one and the one tomorrow. Um, so again, Sarah's already dropped into the chat on our LI page. So um, you can visit that to register for the ones uh, for the rest of this week if you haven't done so already. Um, for any co-presidents here in the room, um, I highly encourage you to attend those if possible um, as you think about leading your chapter. Please let us know um, if you're interested in leading a collaboration corner. Um, you can reach out to us at info at or um, reach out to your chapter coach as well. Finally, I hope you will fill out our feedback survey. Um, Sarah will also be dropping that in the chat. Thank you, Sarah. Um, and I just wanna say again, thank you all for showing up this evening and for sharing your thoughts. I hope you made some new friends. I hope you thought about your own leadership and how you will be, um, yeah, acting upon that going into this new year. So with that, I hope everyone has a wonderful evening. Um, and again, you can click on the, the feedback survey and and log off for the night. Thanks everyone.